Welcome to my review of Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Sometimes books will wake me up in the middle of the night. They leave an imprint on me and they haunt me. This vivid book left an impression on me of the best kind. I recently read Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This was actually a book that I had told myself at one point that I would never read. I had heard too many mixed reviews on this. And you know what? I kind of feel like the joke is on me. This video is going to be dedicated to telling you my thoughts about Stalking Jack the Ripper. It's also going to be talking about um, some of the things that I noticed about the Victorian era literature that Carrie Maniscalco really paid attention to. And I'm also going to be going over why I think this was one of my favorite books of all time. When I was younger, I was very fascinated by serial killers. I really thought about going into forensic science because it just was an area of interest to me. I was interested in the psychology of it, of why, of what can motivate people to do these kinds of things. And so growing up, I had quite a bit of a background in all of the serial killer type stuff. And of course, one of the most notorious serial killers of all time was Jack the Ripper. It was one of the greatest unsolved cases, multiple cases of homicide in the 1800s, and nobody really knew who Jack the Ripper was. There was kind of a lot of things that alluded to who Jack the Ripper was, but nobody really knew for sure. All they really could do was kind of piece together these puzzle pieces of who could have possibly had the motive to do it, who actually did it, and when that person would have had the availability to do it, meaning like wh whether or not they were incarcerated at the time, if they were in an insane asylum. I mean, there were so many things like that could have deterred them from stopping the murders all of a sudden. So this book takes place in 1888 London with Audrey Rose, and she's cutting open a cadaver. In the 1800s, women were not allowed to do these sort of things. The objectivity of being a woman in the 1800s meant that you had no choice but to be looking for a husband to provide for you because women in the 1800s didn't really have a lot of rights. So you have a very independent Audrey Rose who is being helped by her uncle to learn forensic science. And one of the first things like that she does in this is just jumps right in and starts cutting open cadavers. She's obviously been doing this for a little while. She's comfortable enough that he's allowing her to open up a cadaver so that they can look inside to see what the cause of death is for this particular murder. But she's only allowed to attend the school that her uncle runs for forensic science if she dresses like a boy. Audrey Rose's father isn't really even particularly keen on her learning forensic science. Audrey's father doesn't actually know that his brother is helping to teach his niece how to open up a cadaver. And if he finds out, he is going to be extremely angry about the situation because a proper young lady should not be hanging out with corpses and opening them up all day. What attracted a lot of debate in the Victorian area is what a woman Woman should or could do or should be allowed to do as a woman in society, especially in the upper class. That was very predominant there. Audrey was not your typical Victorian era woman, and they made that perfectly clear in this book. She was very independent. She wanted to learn. She enjoyed having her mind stimulated by these crimes and these and opening up cadavers and kind of like learning about science. She had a very scientific mind. But in the Victorian era, women did, really did not have a lot of rights. They were always expected to be searching for a husband and to be the ideal woman to bear children and raise a family. Audrey Rose did not really fit that cookie cutter description of being the ideal woman back then, but she wasn't really too concerned with that. She was more concerned with stimulating her mind and being independent enough for personal growth. On top of that, status was a huge thing in Victorian times. This was also very much emphasized in this book as well. Every time Audrey's father found out that she was doing something that she probably shouldn't have been doing, he always made sure that he either grounded her, he tried to stop her, and it was very, very difficult for her because being the independent person like that she was, she had to figure out how to get around it and sneak around hoping that she won't get caught and get in trouble again for doing something that she is very passionate about. I really had to admire Audrey Rose as a character because not only was she independent, but she also had to have a very strong stomach to deal with all of the death. In the midst of all this, she meets the handsome Thomas Cresswell, who is extremely intelligent. And one of the things that I really, really loved about this book itself. Once we got into it, Thomas Cresswell was very observant and he went in beneath the surface and he noticed things about people because of the slightest detail. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the BBC's Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch, but 
there are instances when Sherlock's looking at a crime scene and he's breaking it down into its parts. He notices from little details and then he extracts those little details and creates a story out of them. I loved the fact that I felt like this did that particular aspect justice because I feel like in a lot of instances there was times when Thomas Cresswell actually was able to break these things down for us and it made me feel like I was watching Sherlock all over again by him mentioning these micro details that were not really necessarily like completely obvious to the normal person but it really allowed you to relate to him and allow you also to say to yourself man this guy is really really smart and that was one of the things of course like everybody loved about Sherlock so not only do you have the best of having a strong female lead but you also have a very charismatic more charismatic, of course, than Sherlock Holmes on BBC, but we still love him anyway. But Thomas Cresswell was extremely charismatic, and I actually found myself kind of not really being a huge fan of him at the beginning, which I kind of feel like was the point, because you're not supposed to like him right off the bat. He's very condescending. He doesn't quite know what Audrey is doing there, and he's actually one of the only guys that actually realizes that Audrey Rose is a female. Thomas Cresswell's also the closest one to her uncle. Her uncle is, of course, of course, uh, once again, the teacher of the school, so he, Thomas actually does help him a lot in solving a lot of crimes. There is this underlying chemistry that really starts to pop when Thomas Cresswell and Audrey Rose really start to work together. They're both very intelligent people. They both match each other in intelligence, and it just comes off as very natural to me. Carrie Maniscalco really didn't make the romance like a super prevalent aspect, but it was enough that if you are into romance, you would be extremely satisfied with this book. Now, of course, this is a young adult book where we don't have explicit scenes or anything else like that in there, but you should also keep in mind that this book, because of the context of it, because it is about stalking Jack the Ripper and it is based on a lot of historical evidence surrounding the Jack the Ripper murder cases, that this is going to be extremely graphic and I should definitely warn you that if you're squeamish to extremely graphic descriptions, because she wasn't really discreet about the details, she was very in your face about the details, so that you really get a feel for how heinous these crimes were and it really lent a ton of atmosphere to this book that I find lacking in a lot of other YA books because they don't go into detail about all the graphic violence being the fact that they are YA. Now Audrey has not known her mother for a very long time. Audrey's mother died very when Audrey was very young of a heart condition. So basically in her immediate family she has her father and her brother Nathaniel. Nathaniel is a jack-of-all-trades master of none. He's one of those people like that has done tons of things. He was he actually worked in the medical school for a while under the uncle but he really couldn't stomach it so he does have some medical experience. But he also kind of has done like a little bit of things here and there. So he's not really like proficient at anything, but he is extremely intelligent himself. He's a little bit more squeamish. So as time goes on, Audrey Rose really blossomed into the person like that she was meant to be. She was just this wonderfully strong character and she also was really adamant about helping to solve the crimes in spite of the fact that this murderer was actually targeting young women young prostitutes to be exact, which is actually historically accurate for the Jack the Ripper's murders. In the midst of all of the murders and, and everything that is going on, Audrey does end up visiting some of the crime scenes and you actually realize that she can stomach a lot of these murders a lot better than a lot of the other guys that are on the crime scene that see this stuff. But because she's used to working with the bodies up close and personal, it makes things extremely easy for her while it's still nauseating but she's able to hold her own. Audrey was a very modern woman for the time that she lived in, and I have to tell you that I can't say enough about how much I loved her. In one variation of the actual historical documentation about speculations about who Jack the Ripper really was, so many books have been written about Jack the Ripper, many theories have been placed, and one of the things that I really loved about this is that this book kind of seemed to lightly interlace all of those theories into one. They actually mentioned in passing several of the people that were predicted to have been Jack the Ripper. Another thing that ha happened to be very historically accurate about this is that there was a couple points in this book where Jack the Ripper actually sends taunting letters to the police stating that you can't catch me and this is going to be my next murder and I can't wait to commit more so that I can outsmart you again. Jack the Ripper, of course, was a very creepy guy, and you know, the fact that he killed women was also extremely violent, so of course, you know, once again, if you are sensitive to violence or anything else like that, 
I do recommend that you do stay away from this because it is not light. This re this book is not light in any form. But the fact that Carrie Maniscalco doesn't spare any punches on this is one of the reasons why I loved this book so much. The fact that this is a YA murder mystery, like they kind of, it's fun because why murder mysteries or murder mysteries of any kind allow you to kind of guess along with the main characters about who did it and so you have a lot of mixed emotions so you kind of don't know what's going on and so like they actually go through and they kind of make you very confused about who could have possibly have murdered these women. Another thing that I wanted to truly highlight in this that I felt was extremely noteworthy was how relatable Carrie Maniscalco made this to actual Victorian literature. She actually used the term of course forensic science over forensic medicine and modernly we actually say forensic medicine instead of forensic science but also in Victorian times like there was this really deep animosity towards technology and this kind of anxiety towards it as well which is a perfect example of Frankenstein. Frankenstein was one of those books that actually got into the anxiety over technology this really kind of dug into that as well, especially towards the end of the book where we get to find out what happened. There's actually a quote in this. The quote is, he was too far gone. Science had taken over his humanity. And so once again, like we have the themes, underlying themes of a Victorian novel, which is completely natural to pretty much most Victorian novels, that there was a deep anxiety towards the advancement of technology. Another thing too is instead of using the term opium, which they, do kind of clarify like that it is opium they call it laudanum which is a historically accurate term that they used to use instead of opium so she really did justice to not only like the storyline itself but she also does justice to the time that it should have been considered written in and she used historical references and historical terminology to describe a lot of things that were in this book and that was another thing that i could not get over on how well this was done i cannot tell you how much i love this book I know like that this book is not 100% historically accurate, but another thing that she does justice is right at the end of the book, she actually tells you what she changed, tells you where the in historical inaccuracies came from, and she really kind of tries to make sure like that she does history for these heinous crimes justice. I know you guys have seen this book floating all over booktube, all over the internet, and they are getting ready to release the last book, Capturing the Devil, co this coming September. And I have to tell you, like, I am absolutely excited to continue on with the series. I thought it was amazing. I did give this a five out of five stars. And, you know, being the fact that this is YA, this isn't extremely fleshed out. Like, you don't, like, really get to feel an actual motivation for why Audrey is doing these things. But you do feel like this character is really worth getting to know because she's so independent and she is so just amazing. I cannot tell you guys how much I absolutely love this book. I do recommend that you pick it up and if you guys don't want spoilers past this I recommend that you guys stop watching here because I did kind of want to just talk about a little bit of what happened towards the end of this book okay so now we're gonna be talking a little bit more about spoilers so at the end of this book we really got to see the anxiety towards technology Audrey Rose goes downstairs into a hidden room that is underneath her father's office and discovers that her brother is the one who's been killing every, all these women because he is trying to reanimate Audrey's mother. And one of the things he's doing is he's using electricity, he's trying to use new hearts, new body parts to try to experiment with it. And you know, looking at this, I, I was so flabbergasted because he was very squeamish and he always came off as very innocent and the good child between him and Audrey. So I never even saw this coming, but in hindsight, because hindsight is 2020, you thought about it and you realize that he does actually have medical experience and you realize that he was out hunting for this killer as a way to cover up what he was doing. And it blew my mind. Like I couldn't even just, I just couldn't even. And so, Audrey is horrified, of course, by this whole thing, and she just cannot get over the fact that this is happening to her and that her dead mother, who's been rotting for quite a while, was dug up, taken underneath their basement, and experimented on. Well, the father walks in too, and they actually contemplate allowing them to cover it up because in Victorian era, they are so concerned with their status and their and their status symbols that they don't even really want to admit that one of the members of their family could possibly be capable of this. The father was trying to protect Audrey the whole time 
that these heinous murders were going on. He was trying to make sure that Audrey was completely out of harm's way because he does love her in his own way, even if it wasn't the ability to give her the freedom that she desired and allow her to go on with her forensic science. But he realized at the end that the real threat was not out in the, in the alleyways that he was trying to keep her from, in the science lab that he was trying to keep her out of because it was not socially acceptable for a woman to be in there. At the end, he realized that the true threat to Audrey was living in their own home. And I feel like out of all of that, that was a really big takeaway and it gave me goosebumps to know that he realized at that last moment when everything was happening that was the true threat was not something that he could protect her from especially because he, by keeping her home he was actually exposing her to more of that threat i don't think nathaniel would have ever stooped to murdering audrey but he did hurt her psychologically and emotionally because I mean, your brother is experimenting on your dead mother. I mean, can you talk about an episode of Jerry Springer in the 1800s? I cannot think of, a, of an episode that would have gotten higher ratings than that. But everything said and done, Daniel does die in the process of them fighting over this. And Thomas does come and of course save the day for Audrey, which once again, he is your knight in shining armor. And I, oh, I cannot tell you how much I love Thomas Cresswell. I can't. I just can't even. But Audrey's father shows a substantial amount of growth that I feel was extremely important to the characters themselves. And Audrey becomes this blossomed independent woman and she has her man and she did it by being herself. And I think that was one of the greatest messages that this could possibly have gone to. Also, one of the things too is that in the end, Audrey's father decides to send her and Thomas Cresswell to a forensic medicine school in Romania. And of course, the second book is called Hunting Prince Dracula. And I am so, because I'm also a huge fan of Vlad Tepish, I am very, very, very curious. Curious to see where Carrie Maniscalco will take this. And I'm wondering if she's going to actually interlace the story of Dracula, or she's going to interlace actual history of Vlad Tepish, because I do happen to also be a huge fan of Vlad Tepish. I am so here for it, and I'm probably going to be doing a review on that book too, discussing all of the things that I love about that book, because I'm planning on binging them as soon as I get around to it. But I will say like that, this was such a worthwhile read to me. I will never say again that I don't think that I'll never read anything like this because I should have looked a little bit closer at it because I'm at the end of the hype and it makes me so sad that I missed out on all of the hype that was leading up to the last book coming out this coming September 2019. And I'm just, it makes me so sad because I just want to gush over this. And so if you guys want to gush with me over this, please, please, please make comments about this. Let's, let's talk about it. Um, let's try to like to leave the spoilers out for like the people like that don't really know what's going to happen that really still do want to read this. I also have a Twitter account, so get with me on that too. I want to discuss this book. I am obsessed. I don't know what I'm doing like right now. All I've been able to do is think about this book. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you guys like this video, hit the little like, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell icon if you want to receive emails every single time I post. Also, I am on Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, and Amazon. Those links are linked in the description below. And as always, I will see you all again very soon.